invite everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Okay, welcome everyone to this special workshop meeting. Hey, I'd like to ask everyone, when you do get a chance to come up, if you're going to come up and speak, we have a paper there. We need you to uh, sign your name and your, your address and speak clearly into the mic. I also wanted to note that we have a camera in the, in the rear next there to uh, Matt Hubbard. Uh, so I just don't want anyone to block the camera. And I also want to make you aware that everything gets picked up in this room. So whether you say, if you're talking to each other, we'll be able to hear you uh, when they when you replay the uh, tape. So just wanted to let everyone to know that. So we're going to take care of one special uh, order of business. Uh, we have a, a letter that we wanted to get, uh, get my approval or my signature on. So we have a uh, opportunity to... Uh, asked METCO, which is the Maryland Economic Development Corporation, to take a look at a project that we're doing in the town of Elton. And this is uh, uh, to ask them to help maybe with some uh, bond financing of a sports park in Elton. We've been working on this thing for years and years and years. So we held this off till tonight till we had a full board. And I just wanted to note that we did have, uh, we've talked to council on a couple different times. We've talked to bond council, and this isn't the easiest thing to get through. We got a lot of hurdles. We got a lot of things as we're moving forward with this project. But I've always said, you know, uh, uh, a couple of things that came, came to my mind today as we're trying to move forward with this support ladder. And I want to stress, this is a support ladder. It kind of gets the ball rolling on a lot of things. But I always said that, uh, if you're ready to, uh, my, my parents always said, uh, I said, well, I don't know if my wife and I are ready to have children. And uh, my dad and mom said, you're never ready to have children, right? And it just happens. You got to make it work. I, I think back uh, in 2002, when I had a lot of hair on that wall over there, and I served as the mayor, and that was my last year in 2002, we had some land under contract and it's actually the same part of this Southfields project that we wanted to relocate to Elton Little League and have high and dry fields. Guess what happened in 2002? It never happened in 2003. So I think about those things. And in 2002, quite frankly, that's 21 years ago. We've had that sportsplex built probably by then if we were able, ever able to move forward with it. And then for many years, we always talked about we want to build a community center. Can we build a community center? And, and the answer has always been, no, really, we can't afford that community center. We can't afford that community center. Quite frankly, we probably couldn't afford that community center, but we did build it. And if anyone's ever had an opportunity to go visit our community center, it's one of the nicest uh, community centers. Uh, I, I would almost, almost say in the state of Maryland. It's a very, very nice facility. So with that, saying all that, I'd like to get the board uh, a motion to approve the support letter uh, to the Maryland Economic Development Corporation. So we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Okay, next discussion we have collective bargaining for non sworn employees. Uh, we wanted to host this meeting tonight. Uh, we have uh, an opportunity for our employees or, or wanting to uh, have collective bargaining in the town. I think you probably, everyone knows everyone's opinion up here. Maybe, maybe you don't. Uh, but this is an opportunity for you to come in front of us, uh, show your support, or which probably some people maybe in the audience that don't support this. So we'd like to do it in an organized fashion if we could. Uh, I'd like to for you to keep your comments down to maybe three or four minutes per person tops. And uh, we'll go right on through the room. So I'm going to kind of start. I don't know who's going to be the starting point. Maybe there's a starter. Is there a starter? If you got a starter, come on down. If there's someone who wants to start. If, do you? Yeah, go ahead. 
And we're here to listen tonight so we can make a decision. And, and go ahead and uh, talk into the, you can say your name and address, and then we'll get you to sign it as the next person's coming up. Okay. You can pull that to you closer, sir. And you can say your name and address first. James Dale Duncan, Clinton 110, Richard Street. That was my first sentence. <laughs> I'm speaking today in support of expanded collective bargaining with the Far Amendment for the Supreme Court in Small. I remember I saw. Here, right here. Sir, the guy right here on front. The glasses. No, 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 they're for far away. Oh, <laughs> they're so small, I'm just being cheater. Sorry. You want to sign on? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I've always loved the small town atmosphere around Elton. No matter where you go, you know, people, everywhere you see them across the street, etc. I've lived in the, in the town of Elton for 18 years. During this time, I've come to work closely with to get to know. Many town employees have gotten to know them, their families, and seen their kids grow up within part of their lives. Your employees are residents too. They work hard to make sure that the town is clean, safe for us, and also for themselves and their families. They want collective bargaining so they can keep doing just that. We are all working together, the same goal. Sharing that the service is brighter the best that they can be for both employees and the residents. So I'm asking you to please pass the charter amendment to enable collective bargaining for your employees. Thank you. Thank you. Could we have your written comments yeah. uh, so we can have it for the record also? Sure. You can just leave them right there. Is that good with you, that would be Michelle? Perfect. Thank you. And then that way we can make sure we have it. Next up, you can come on down while he's autographing the paper. <clears throat> And my name is Thank You Rose. I live in 104 Mitchell Street. I've been resident there for 10 years. And I uh, see the kids grow up pretty much, all of them. And these, these people, they, they take care of me throughout this year. And I propose. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind filling out, you know, I could probably fill out that paper. Okay. That's How's that fine. sound? That'd be great. Can I get it? It? Oh, Could you bring that paper up to me there, Mr. Nixon? I think, <clears throat> just think this way I can fill it out a little bit quicker for everybody. And Mr. Dixon, if you mind, don't mind the whole thing. Mr. Reynolds, what was your address again? What's our real page? Okay, next up. Hello, my name is Amanda Kibler, 127 Independence Drive. Thank you, Amanda. <clears throat> I had the opportunity to speak at the August 16th meeting, and I wanted to take the time to reiterate my message to you guys. We collectively in this room are Elton. I've lived here for 10 years. My husband has lived here for almost 20 years and has worked for the town for just over two years. We're raising our family here. We spend time at the park. We go fishing. We attend the fall festival, various other parades and events throughout the year. We go out to eat on Main Street and we shop around the shops in town. My husband and his coworkers do all of the unseen work that helps Elton, that helps keep Elton running and looking nice. Um, they keep our streets clean, our sidewalks, sidewalks clean and in good repair. They maintain the parks and they help all of the fun family town events run seamlessly with their behind the scenes work. I support a charter amendment to expand the rights to employees um, of the town of Elkton who make all of these things happen uh, so that they can have a voice at the table, a voice to discuss and negotiate the policies and drive and impact their work. I support collective, I support a charter amendment to expand the rights, and I support collective bargaining because I want my family to continue to do all of these things that we love. I want the employees to have a voice, a, a way to voice their concerns, drive changes that impact their safety, their job security, the way that they are treated, and um, everything that happens around town that's the unseen business. 
So please pass the charter amendment to expand collective bargaining and help our town live up to its highest potential. Thank you, Amanda. No. Amanda, what was your address? Uh, 127 yeah. Well, first and foremost, how you been feeling? My name is Joanne Clark. I've lived on 506 North Street for 65 years. I'm known as the mayor of North Street. <laughs> I see all of the town employees out and about and doing. I don't know what their job descriptions are, but I would say they go far beyond their job descriptions. Much better in all kinds of weather, all hours, always ready to be there and help. Whatever it takes me. To pass the amendment of the I fully and and I'm feeling much better. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Clark. Yep. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Walter Scott. I live at 108 Mitchell Street. I've been a resident of the town of Elkman for 39 years. I fished in the mayor all the back, backyard. Um, I'm also an employee of the Department of Public Works on the water crew. I'm here today to ask for your support in amending the town charter to expand collective bargaining rights for me and the rest of my co-workers, by amending the charter, you allow your employees who are also residents of the town to affect their voice. Uh, as we stand or stated in our public letter, we can do the do this by having a seat at the table and bargaining and. <laughs> The input in the policy and discussions that affect us at our work. When employees had to say, have a say in their job and in the future, we stay in, we stay longer and are able to provide better service to the town. I want to continue working for and helping to build the town that I'm proud of, that I call home for my whole life. I believe the best way to service our residents is by using our voice and addressing problems quickly. Help make our job more effective and provide and make sure we are all safe at work. I can only do that with the rights to collective bargaining. I ask as a worker and a resident, please support town employees by amending the town charter and expand collective bargaining rights to the health employees. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Bryce Ford Oliver. I reside at 154 Independent Drive. Can I get that name again? Bryce Ford Oliver, that's R E X F O R D. Um, I've been a resident of Elkin for the past five years, moved here in 2018 to the city. I decided to actually start a family here. It's going quite well. The township has been very welcoming. The uh, town employees have also been welcoming. So it's it's kind of a smooth transition, slower pace, but it's much more enjoyable. So I'm here to ask you to support the township employees. An amendment charter to a passing of charter amendment for collective bargaining. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. Thank you. Can I get your address one more time? 154 Independence Drive. Thanks. Thank 
Uh, my name is Wendy Eva, and I have lived at 416 North Street for 35 years. Uh, I appreciate y'all taking the time to hear from the residents as well as the employees this evening. Our employees, including three of my own family members, do the work that many residents don't seem to come to appreciate or even see sometimes. And that work keeps this town running. So tonight I wanted to show up for the employees and to tell you that I see them, I appreciate them. And for that reason, I support them having a voice in their jobs. I ask you to support the town employees by passing a charter amendment to expand collective bargaining to the non school employees. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you could leave them right here, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Hello, Vicki. Something different. I have a letter from my sister who's a resident. Okay. Um, and her name is Nisa and William Bucci, B U C C I. And they live at 9 Gina Marie Lane. I'm just going to read her letter. Um, good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Lisa Bucci, and on behalf of myself and my husband, William, we are asking you to share our support for a charter change that will enable collective bargaining for all non sworn town employees. My husband and I live at 9 Gina Marie Lane, where we've raised our three children. I've been a resident of the town of Elton my entire life. It's for that reason that I have great respect for the work town employees do on a daily basis. While we both work in Delaware, we choose each day to call Elton home because of the same safety and security it has provided me since I was a child. Our choice to stay Elton residents is a proud one, and one we can make because of the people who keep this town running or employees. I'm also a family member of a proud town employee. This means I have two interests here. See my sister who sees and to see this town succeed. I believe that passing a charter amendment to expand collective bargaining would be both of those. It's the unseen work of town employees that makes this popular who do businesses in town, have running water in our homes, spend time with our families in the parks, and enroll our kids in summer camp. Their employees work tire tirelessly so all of us can live well in our town. It's time we listen to them and give them the same respect they give us in their jobs every day. Town employees want a voice in the decisions that affect them and their work. And as the mayor and the board of commissioners, you are empowered by residents to make that happen. I'm disappointed I couldn't be there today to share my support in person. However, I hope you take my comments as earnestly as you would if I was standing in front of you. Please move forward and pass the charter amendment to expand collective bargaining so all town employees can have the voice they deserve in their work. Thank you. And then I just want to reiterate. Um, I'm an employee and a town resident, and I'm asking you for your support to you, the mayor and commissioners, to pass the charter amendments to allow all of your town employees the right for collective bargaining. And my address is 211 Patriot Day. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, okay. Thank you. My name is Tracy Gallery. I have been employed with the town of Elton DPW for 15 years. During my 15 years, I have watched the town employees morale drop to nothing. It is so bad that I've been looking for it like COVID. It fades away, only showing small signs here and there. But put a mask over and it'll stay away. Town employees are coming together to have a seat at the table, making the improvements that will bring morale up, keep, keep people working here, and improve services. Too many times when employees are treated as disposable or spoken to in a way no one here deserves to be spoken to. Well, we could come to you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, every time something like that happens, we shouldn't have to. There was an incident not too long ago, where one of you came to the shop and listened to the employees. We told you in explicit details of what I'm talking about here today. 
Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. But unless there is a formal process where the employees feel heard and protected, this will continue to happen, and your dedicated and hardworking employees will leave. Instead, we're coming to you to say we want the right to negotiate a process where we feel like we can have transparency, accountability, and the respect on all sides. We want collective bargaining agreement so the next years, the next week, in five years, and in 10 years, we know we won't backslide with new supervisors or a change in leadership. You have the power to support the non-sworn employees by amending the charter to allow us to have collective bargaining. Please do what is right, amend the charter, and let us have a say in what affects us and the residents of the town of Elkton. Thank you. Thank you. You don't need my address. Or do you? Yes. <laughs> we do. 24, Snug Harbor Way, Earlville, Maryland. Thank you, Tracy. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Lisa Scott, and I live at 108 Metro Street. I've lived in Elkton for 24 years, and I'm here to ask you to support the town employees and residents by passing a charter amendment to expand collective bargaining to a non sworn employees. The employees who have worked for the town are dedicated, hardworking, and have the experience that will be invaluable in improving their jobs and service. <laughs> it is for that reason I'm asking you to pass the charter amendment and start the process so employees can have their rights to voice in their work. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> their, their, their union t shirts, absolutely, the union that they've all chosen to be a part of. I'm Carol Moss. I live at 305 right now. I'm an employee of the Elton Police Department. I'm in my 23rd year. Just so that you know, I'm ineligible for the union because of my job responsibilities. But I'm, I'm here to support the employees of the town. And the um, my understanding is when the police went to their union many years ago, the town residents voted that they could have collective bargaining and have the union. They were part A. Part B was the Elton Police Department civilians. And I believe at this point, we still have the right to union rights. So really changing the charter would be changing the wording on that section, is my belief. Um, I know that previous chiefs never supported uh, civilians. And I believe had we joined the union back then, I would not have waited 11 years for a more I believe that would have happened sooner. Um, I'm thankful for what you did put in play as far as the evaluations now and the word increase, you know, three percent that we look forward to. But I believe we're at this point looking at the union because there's been a breakdown between employees, management, and the HR department. I believe if they were able to mesh together and voice their opinions and be heard and have action taken, we would be here for them. But I believe that we're beyond that. The employees need a voice, and the union is the voice for them to be able to negotiate, be able to have the things they want. We will see them around and improve um, working conditions, be expected from amongst each other as far as being treated equally. So I am for the union, and I ask that you change the charter because we're the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Jeremy Kibler, 127 Independence Drive, up and getting ready for the whole thing. Um, you've heard from my coworker and coworkers and I a number of times now, and in in a few of the past meetings, you have all said you wish you heard from us sooner on the issues we were having and how to help us. 
Um, we employees and residents are here now telling you what the solution is, and we hope you listen to the people in this room, as well as those who have come to speak to you these last few months um, and pass a charter amendment. So we can have a long-term path to resolve any issue. We all have our work in the town at the top of our mind when we tell you we want a voice. So we can continue to make improvements and do the best quality work. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is John Ziegler. I'm a town resident. I live at 211 Pages Way in Elkton. I lived in Elkton for 10 years, and I'm here today proudly to support the town employees' right to have a union. Please support town employees and residents by passing the Charter Amendment to expand collective bargaining for non-sworn employees. Thank you. Thank you, John. My name is Morgan Cather. I've been a town employee for almost eight years. Today we have. Hmm? Today we have. Morgan Cather. Okay. C A T H E R. I've been a town. I've been an employee for almost eight years, and I've been a resident to the two Bruce Ford for almost five. I I enjoy working here, and I want to be able to see the town grow and the employees be able to grow with it. I believe that. Supporting the Charter Amendment will help us be able to do that through an open dialogue between us, our management, and you. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, Robert Gorman, and three, St. Louis Drive. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Commission. My name is Bob Gorman, and I have been an active town resident for 26 years. I have worked with multiple, multiple fraternal and charitable organizations and active in all 11 roles of our government at various times, maybe sometimes to dismay of certain officials. I raised my child here and plan to let out all the years here. I'm here to ask you to support town employees and residents by passing a charter amendment to expand collective bargaining to non sworn employees. I and my family have lived on both sides of union and management issues. <clears throat> my maternal grandfather was a union organizer in the 1920s and served as its secretary for many terms. My paternal grandfather, being one of the earliest paid firefighters, was consequently an early and active member of the International Association of Firefighters. My father was a shop steward until he was promoted to management. My brother-in-law was treasurer of his union local before his second career working for the Board of Elections, and I was a member of the Professor's Union during my academic career before going into biotech. Wired town ranking file employees asking for a union. It gives a formal voice to employees, not just the contract time, but every day of the year to your job student. It serves as a check on favoritism and unfair treatment. It serves as a check on unfair and potentially illegal labor practices. It de decreases wage inequality, such as wage compression, which is currently causing more turnover and loss of the most experienced workers in every field. It closes gender and race wage gaps. All of these things I've listed raise morale. Who doesn't want these things for our employees? And they are our employees. They work for all of us. They are also our fellow citizens, neighbors, and in close-knit small town community, our extended families. Another big upside of unionization is increased productivity when employee engagement. If I feel like I have a say in how a place is run, I'm going to work harder. This results in lower turnover rates, avoiding disrupt the disruption and expense of having to hire and train new folks and employees. Employees outside the public sector have the right to make the decision to form a union, and employers need to respect that choice. We should also give and respect that choice for public sector employees. Years ago, the town residents overwhelmingly voted in a referendum to allow a police union. A referendum requires the employees to get a signature, to get on the ballot, then wait for the next election, campaign, and upon winning, then form the official union and start the collective bargaining process. 
I urge the council to take the efficient route now to adopt the charter amendment to avoid this inefficiency and let the employees get back to focusing on their jobs. Please take this opportunity to pass the charter amendment to expand collective bargaining to the remaining town employees. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Uh, I am uh, John Nixon of uh, 111 Vince Drive, 17 year resident of Elkton, and also the chair of the Cecil County Democratic Party. I'm here today to speak in favor of all expedited measures needed to the charter to ensure collective bargaining for Elkton's town non sworn employees. There are three reasons why I support this action. It builds a professional workforce, it promotes safety and accountability of our town employees and it helps control costs and save money. On the point of professionalism, through the collective bargaining process, employees gain status with the administration, agencies, and local businesses to work towards common goals to improve the quality of life and work in the town. On safety, by negotiating workplace conditions through the collective bargaining process, employees are allowed the dignity of having a voice in their work product. Further, they can advise the town administration of potential work hazards, making workplaces safety and saving the town money through costly, avoiding costly litigation. And cost, through collective bargaining process, an employee contract allows the town budget, the town to budget structurally for compensation plans many fiscal years in advance, offering stability to the town and its workforce, and workers stay longer at union jobs reducing costly turnovers and training. If all in all, a contract is more cost efficient in the long run. For these reasons, I urge you to use your good officers and approve these expedited measures needed to the charter. Thank you. Thank you, John. How many people in the room are against this charter change. <laughs> Record shows uh, no hands. No hands. Is there anyone else? Jess? <laughs> and, and I know, Patrick, I know you wanted to wrap it up there at the end. Okay. Whoever wants to continue to keep talking. Good evening, ladies and commissioners. Um, I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak uh, this evening. I would like to lend my support of the collective bargaining uh, for the town of Elkton employees. Uh, the employees of the town, they are the backbone of the town of Elkton and Team Elkton, and they provide essential services for all our citizens. Public Works especially has some of the most strenuous working conditions based on the nature of her job. Uh, as a former employee of the Elkton Alliance for 17 years, I saw firsthand how varied and demanding your job could be, from fixing water main breaks, sewer breaks, paving, painting, maintenance, and overall beautification of the town. Someone is always on call to service the needs of all the residents. All the employees are an extension of in the face of the town of Elkton. They are the first contact with many residents and work hard to alleviate concerns, assist the public, and keep everything going. The town of Elkton already has a collective bargaining agreement with the police department and the remaining town employees should not be treated any differently. The town of Elkton operates as a team and being able to voice concerns should be afforded to everyone. I hope you support the Elkton town employees having collective bargaining rights and use the charter amendment to streamline improvements that will lead to more efficiency and stability. Thank you. And it's 1715 West Pulaski Highway, Elkton, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Get out <laughs> So I'm um, live outside of Elton, but I'm here. Um, I work in Elton, so I can give you your address. Absolutely. Okay. You see your address and your name. Okay. Um, so 170 East Main Street in Elton. Um, so good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Devin Barker, and I work at the Department of Social Services, serving the Northern Region for six years. I live outside of town limits, but the majority of the people I serve are residents of Elton or have been displaced in Elton. I'm also a union shop steward. You may also remember me from the town meeting on August 16th. In that meeting, I used my lunch hour to come and share how being a union member has impacted the quality of work I am able to provide. Tonight, I would like to emphasize how being a union member has created a stronger relationship with my administration. 
Recently, my peers and I have invested in promoting an indoor air quality policy that is going through legislation. We noted concerns for mold in our building in addition to other safety concerns. Empowered by my role in the union, I spoke with my administration about the concerns and together we created a health and safety committee. Administration and the union had a say in who all came together for this committee and we meet on a monthly basis at this time. Administration made it clear that they are invested in the issue as we all work in the same building and they have concerns for their own health too. Administration also continues to recognize our right to organize and advocate for basic rights in the workplace. I have a good relationship with my supervisors and the administration and collective bargaining strengthens our ability to work together and understand each other because we operate in formal processes that allow for dignity and respect on all sides when solving problems or talking about issues. I believe that all employees should have a voice at work and the right to have a seat at the table to speak up for themselves and protect the work they value. In my experience as a state employee serving this community, we can get burnt out quickly and our jobs can be unpredictable on a daily basis. When we have the power to have control of our working conditions and environment, we are re-energized to continue our work and are reminded of our passion for what we do. As a proud union member, I've seen greater transparency and improved morale when we know problems workers have are being taken seriously on all levels, which ultimately improves our services for residents and retention for employment. I know you value the development and betterment of this town. I'm asking the board to invest in the workers to invest their time, lives, and expertise into bettering this town every day. I'm asking the board to pass a charter amendment and expand collective bargaining to the employees to make our town better. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This is uh, okay. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the commission. My name is Patrick Moran. I'm the president of Aspen, Maryland. We represent approximately 45,000 state, county, municipal employees, higher education employees, and K-12 employees across the state of Maryland in every single legislative district. And they live in every single county across uh, the state of Maryland. Uh, we're here to lend our support to uh, the employees, the non-sworn employees of the city of Elkton who have come forward to form a union. Uh, they have spoken up, uh, and I want to commend them for doing so. Uh, it takes a lot of guts. It takes uh, some courage to do so uh, when they are uh, asking uh, their employers for something that maybe they're not accustomed to. Uh, they simply want to exercise their rights, uh, go through the democratic process, and work with the city to build upon the great successes that the city uh, of Elkton has made and provide uh, for the city of Elkton. ASME is made up of people. The American Federation of State, County, Municipal Employees is made up of people, like the hardworking people in this room and the great people of the city of Elkton. We all look forward to working side by side to build on the successes of the city of Elkton. And that's all I think the employees are asking for when they came to us. The so thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Patrick. Is there anyone on the Zoom meeting? I see a uh, Campbell. Did they want to make a comment or? I just asked to yeah, unmute. I asked you to unmute. Unmute? I guess not. Very good. So, you know, I'm going to ask the board. Uh, we've heard a lot of testimony here. Uh, this evening, and I thought it's the right thing to do for our employees to have an opportunity to uh, uh, sell their their position. And uh, you know, there's over 50 people in the room here today, and I'm sure that uh, other than some of the department heads, they may may or may not be in favor. But I think that everyone in this room looking here, I counted over 50 people, and I didn't see any hands that. Uh, went up against uh, the charter change. So the, the predicament that uh, we are in as a town board is that, uh, you know, if you want to, if you want to treat everything as equals, the uh, Elton Police Department went out in 2005, 2006, two, I don't know what year it was, they knocked on a lot of doors, they were able to uh, get, I think, 20% of the town 
registered signatures to be able to put the opportunity to, to go for collective bargaining on the ballot for the uh, residents of the town to vote. There was an advantage to, for them to do that. One, you know, by going door to door, they were actually able to sell the residents on exactly what they wanted and what they wanted to do. And when it came to vote, it was uh, overwhelmingly support for the uh, police officers to uh, unionize. Our case here is, a, in, in my view, a little bit different. I think there is there is a uh, an opportunity that we as a board can change that charter. We can change the charter amendment. And I do believe that there was a part B uh, in this uh, from what I remember. Now, I wasn't part of that. That was my little area in between. But I believe that there is a little window there that if this board wanted to choose, uh, we could uh, uh, make that change. I think everyone knows my opinion on this, I could go, I, I think that going out and getting the signatures, uh, I don't think that that's a need. I still, I'm big twixt in between, as Charlie would say, of putting it on the ballot or not. But I would be, uh, just to let everyone know, I would be supportive of changing that charter. Uh, Earl, you want to? Yes, I would love to start. Um, First of all, um, just to say thank you guys for coming in here. Um, it was good to hear from the residents. Um, I've talked to several people since the last meeting. Um, I sit and talk for maybe 15, 20 minutes, maybe about 40 minutes. Um, getting a better understanding, a chance to stop and talk to HR uh, earlier when we, when we first started talking this negotiation um, issue. Everyone knows I've been a town commissioner close to 20 years here in the town of Elkin, and I live in Breeze, Elkin. Um, the charter amendment, well, I guess uh, through my conversations, there were several people who let me know that maybe the last time I talked, something didn't come across right. But I think we was asked the board if it came down to us uh, voting for um, uh, the charter, not the charter, I mean, for collective bargaining, which way would we go? And I made a statement that um, I would have to let the thing go to a referendum, go to a voting for the citizens because it's kind of out of our hands. Um, and that was the statement I made. I didn't really say, oh, yeah, I want to go against the uh, uh, you guys taking your choice. That wasn't the way it was meant. So by saying that, there was a question that was asked. Is there a part in the uh, charter that the police use that we can use to actually approve this amendment? And that's the question I want to ask HR. Is there a part in there that we didn't see or we didn't hear? Because that was not something that I was aware of at the time. Commissioner, I would, I would, that's not, that's beyond my wheelhouse. I would defer to John Down. Okay. Number two, before I pass this along, is John Stanley in here? Who's that? Joe Stanley. Joe Stanley. Okay, I asked him if he would stop by and explain that to the board, the section that we're missing. He's not here. So anyway, I made a statement, and I'm moving on. <laughs> I made a statement from HR, uh, the uh, management, the employees. I, I made a statement that the board here hasn't uh, 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 deprived anyone from their rights to come talk to management, HR, or us. Um, to me, I think it's an open door policy. You know, my job, your job, the same way I, I treat you guys with respect. So by saying all that, I just want to say, listening to you guys today, my mind has changed about the um, collective bargaining, and I support it to be a change in the charter. Follow on. <laughs> Any comments? I gotta go now. <laughs> no, I appreciate everybody coming forward and expressing your gratitude and your sentiments about public works. Believe me, I think every one of us second all those words. You guys are great. I see you all on a daily basis. I know how hard you work. I know how good you are. And I think you deserve it. I'm in full support.
you all know from day one I supported you and that hasn't changed. Uh, I also was probably the person that recently came down and talked to some of the employees. I was down there to get a tool or something, but thank you for coming out and talking to me. And, and, and most recently, I talked with Walter Scott for an hour on the street. We talked about a number of things that he knew then, and that hasn't changed. I'm, I'm there for you. I think I've been else to drive. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, I was here. I'm going to be. I'm going to be really honest. I was here 60 years. This town I was born here. I was born here. I was born here. I was born here. And nobody loves this town more than more than I do. It was my son. And I'm immensely proud of this town. I am immensely proud of all our workers. I can't say enough about you, and um, I probably will never be able to thank you all enough for the hard work that you do, um, the good job that you do. I see you go beyond. I remember calling Dan one time, and I said, who was that employee working on a Friday night after hours in the pouring rain, picking up limp? You know, I, I was flabbergasted at seeing that kind of dedication and, and hard work. Um, that's that's a given. That's a given. Um, Patrick said one thing that struck me. I mean, I'm listening to all of these, and I understand where you're coming from. But Patrick said that. Um, he hopes that we can support the democratic process. And to me, the democratic process has to be afforded to our citizens. And if they say they want collective bargaining, then hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, but I don't feel I don't feel like that's a decision that I should make on their behalf. We're talking May. Mm -hmm. um, to put it, I do support putting it on for the ballot. I don't feel as though anybody should have to go out and get signatures. Um, that never, that part of it never sat well with me, even though the police have to do it. But, you know, if we can put it on the ballot for May, um, and it passes, I support you all 100%. Um, I want you to be happy in your job. I, I feel like we, as a board, over these years that I've been on the board, we've given you just about everything we could possibly give you on our own. We've given you, you know, good health insurance. We've given you short-term disability, long-term disability. We pay for life insurance. Uh, we we just adopted the merit scale because we care about you and we want you know to hit those important parts of, of your life. Um, I feel like once once you have a union, I don't feel as though I'm going to be able to talk to you uh, as freely or make uh, decisions as as easily as we did in passing that that that. Uh, Adoption of the merit scale, you know. Um, but I understand you're looking at your future, and um, I'm not sure <laughs> what the union will do for you, other than give you a voice to sit down at the table and talk about whatever it is that you're not happy with. Um, I have asked the union reps multiple times, "What happens if?" The town employees don't feel as though they're they're happy with the union. No one's been able to answer that. Go ahead. Yes, uh, Stuart Casper was asked me. I think I apologize if I made it clear at the last meeting I was in, but if you authorize a charter amendment, uh -huh. the workers will get together and they will decide whether they want the union or not. They will decide. Well, haven't they already done that? They, they have come, the supermajority says they have done that. There's a formal process. There's still the workers to sign. Yeah. Then they will 
collectively bargain with the town okay. and people can join or not join. There's okay. nothing compulsory. Okay. And that's the process. If people want out, they can get out. Now that's the part I don't get clarity on. Uh, I don't, How do I, they get out if they join the union? There's a union and then people sign a membership card. They can be a member or not a member. They're covered by collective bargaining. What happens once they are a member? They choose to pay dues and be a member of the union and participate in our internal union democratic process that creates the priorities of the workers. And if and someone wants to say, I don't want that, you can negotiate for me, but I don't want to pay, I don't want to do anything, they can do that. They can stop paying the dues. Yes. That's that's the question I've been asking. And, and I, 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 I hope I'm again directly answering you. You have. You have here. There's no compulsory membership. It's a well, no, public I sector union. I assume that it would be compulsory. I, I was just wondering about once once they formulate the union and the workers decide. They, uh, yeah, I work yeah, for them. Yeah, I got that part. I got that part. So anyway, thank you for answering that. Sure. It's, it's it's been bothering me uh, since I asked it the first several times. But I'll go back to where I don't want to. Be, I don't want to belabor this. Um, I'll go back to the democratic process. Um, I, I I I understand where you're coming from. I I want to see you all happy, but I still think that the, the citizens should be the one in May to pull that lever for you, and that we all move forward um, together on the same page. And that's all I'm asking. Thank you, Jean. Lou, do you can you tell me or can you? Was there a reason why in the charter back then it wasn't included? The the intent of the uh, charter amendment that was on the ballot. Uh, uh, so they focused on police employees. But people in the back. Not, uh, police officers. It was all for the police officers. And then that's why they developed the uh, FOP Lodge 124 Inc. And that's just how it's worked with collective bargaining with them. Thank you. Um, well, listen, we were going to, yes. So they did the um, the ballot thing, and the, the townspeople said yes, they would have A for the police and B for the police civilians to have the right to. So I, I have to get I I have to review yeah. the charter to see you have is that from the charter? Yep. <laughs> Good. Yeah. All right, that's the part that I was in before early. Well, I wanted them to share it the board. No, let me read it. Can I read it? Okay, so this is what I want. Recognition of employee organizations. A was unless otherwise agreed by the town, there should be two units of employees eligible for representation by an exclusive bargaining agent. Unit A consisting of all sworn police officers below the rank of lieutenant, including sergeants, corporals, probationary police officers who have completed their initial entrance level training for certificate certification by the Maryland Police Training Commission and Unit B consisting of all other employees of the police department. So it did open up for the, the, the folks that worked in the police officer, which would have non sworn personnel. B says an employee organization seeking recognition as an exclusive bargaining agent for a unit of employees may file a petition seeking that recognition with the town administrator in the form approved by the town administrator. When a petition is presented to the town administrator, it demonstrates that at least 30% of the employees in unit A or B have stated in writing that they seek to be represented for purposes of collective bargaining by the petitioning employee organization and said employee organization is eligible to represent that unit of employees that town administrator shall, on behalf of the town, grant recognition to the employee organization after verifying by a secret ballot election conducted by the Board of Supervisors of the election that the majority of the employees in said unit of employees desire separate some such representation. Am I reading it that we would have a... I don't know, I'm not prepared to address yeah. that. Yeah. 
So it kind of sounds like to me, if the majority of the non-sworn personnel want to become, but I don't know, and this came right from the charter. Yes. I distinguish police, police civilians, right? Yes. It doesn't say administration or EPW. And I think that's what probably needs to be amended. Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Unit, yeah. unit B. So unit B, all it needs to be is consisting of all employees of the town of Elton as described in 2.24.020B of this chapter, whatever, right? In, 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 all, in all due respect, uh, the unit B right now, even though they don't have with, with Carol's group, they do still enjoy some of the benefits from the uh, FOP, for example, the shift differential of many of the policies without having to pay you. So they do enjoy some of those benefits already. But anyway, that that to me sounds like it's police civilians. Yes, so that should be, you know, if that's going to be considered. That should that's the expansion uh, that you're considering. Luke, is, is that what was on the ballot at the time? Yeah, this this, this is yeah. what was yeah. voted on the ballot. That was what was the actual verbiage on the ballot. This this was probably what it was. That's what I want to say. Mm -hmm. And Mayor, that did say police civilian, correct? Yes. It, it says like on. Uh, let's see. All uh, of all other employees. John. John, can you take a look at this? Sure, I'd be happy to. So we'll get we'll get John to take a look at it, but I think you know. I, I think we have four or five, four and a half. Uh, Come on, Gene. Yeah. Listen, I mean, Gene, listen, I'll say you got three, and I'm going to stand with Gene right now. So it's three to two against us. So uh, so we're going to get uh, John Downs to look that over. If the intent was to not have that word there, and maybe we can look back at some of the minutes, then... Uh, Let's make the charter change. I mean, who knows where that will take us, right? Yeah. Okay. But listen, we'll we'll have some action here very shortly. I'd say at the you think you can get us some clarification by next meeting? There we go. So the next meeting is next Wednesday. And uh I think we're moving along. But I appreciate everyone coming in here tonight, um stating their opinion and uh really appreciate you. Thank you. If you want to stick around to listen about trash collection, you're certainly welcome. <laughs> Um, I Dan, Brian, you guys will come down. Then they want to pass through it to get shot because it's in the middle of the pot down there. If I could get everyone to exit the meeting, if you have a stock meeting going, that'd be great. So we can get on with the rest of the business. So Dan, you have uh, this is the award recommendation uh, that you would like to propose to us. You're on. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, when it comes when it comes to 
Let me give an introduction before I get to the award itself. When it comes to um, trash collection, we we learned an awful lot in the last year when it comes to stuff. So when we started realizing, when we when we realized we had to make a, you know, we put the actual trash concept out for bid, when we started realizing about in the winter time, we realized, hey, we, you know, we have to get a, get a, get a different set of eyes and that kind of stuff. Because during the winter time, we actually met with a number of different contractors to say, you know, hey, this is Elton. We have a good trash day, you know, are you interested in getting this big idea to help, you know, we have a change of idea. We also met with the um the county landfill. Based on these particular ideas, we came up with a pretty extensive RFP. So during the RFP process, you know, we 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 discovered that, you know, basically listening to the contractors, got very, very, very detailed what we're looking for for the town itself. Also, we've also got new residents because we 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 get the calls and those what. And also keep conducting staff because they've been very, very instrumental because you know we have you know we have one gentleman back here that actually follows you know following the current trash contractors around where he was part of control. So based on that, we put the RP together, you know, we, we put it out for bid. We told the contractors, hey, the most important thing is, you know, in addition to you know the regular the regular contractors, we want to see your qualifications and technical qualifications and additional price. Because at the end of the day, we want every way they collected to uh, we need all the trash to be collected and we'll put those out that way. So we see this have four bidders, three of the four bidders that actually you know gave us gave us proposals. And the proposal step back, we had a committee, we looked at the technical qualifications. No, we, we 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 scored all their proposals on the uh, qualifications and references, technical proposals, and the pricing, same thing. Based on what we got together, we did a score, and you know, we, we scored out of a possible 100 points. And the highest score that we found was the Republic Services. They actually had 80 out of a possible 100 points. So, based on that, you know, based on the qualifications, and how many points did they have? 80 out of 100. And what did the other ones have? Can you tell me? Yeah, uh, Casella had 72 out of 100, and Trash Ship was 49 out of 100. And we based on qualifications for references of 30. Technical proposal for 40 and pricing proposal for 30. So that's how we came up to 100, to 100 points. And based on based on the committee, we decided this is the best way to go. We include public services. Also, if you look at the technical thing, they 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 really looked at the town, they actually toured it, they actually have they actually have a plan going forward um, of um, of trash collection. The trash collection where the public is proposing is five days a week. Not only just not only just front end loaders, but they've got rear end, rear end, you know, the typical tippers as well. They're so looking at picking up trash five days a week in different sections, so they'll always be in town. And they've also got um of toters as part of the proposal itself. You know, basically you know, 90, 96 gallon toters, all the black lid, which would be for trash, all the blue lid, which would be for recycling. And, and Dan, our current contractor is in town. How many days a week? Three. Hmm. So three waste management's here three days. So now we're going to get five day service. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had a follow-up question to that. With yeah. Our current um, waste management, they come twice a week. How often would the Republic come? No, no, yeah. no, 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 come three times a week. The Republic will be here five days a week. For, be, be for, um, for section. You know how many sections? Like, once. It's once a week. Section, it's, it's trash and recycle same day. Because we get, we get trash picked up twice a week. No, no. 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 We you used to. You used to. But used to. Remember, they changed. It. Right. Yeah. Yes. He doesn't put much trash. <laughs> <laughs> your your wife's been doing it. <laughs> well, you do get your days. You got Main Street and you got your house. And you yeah. get two days. <laughs> <laughs> That's what days so, for. <laughs> right now, three days a week, you're yeah. doing the entire town, and it, but they do it in sections. Correct. So by doing five days a week, we're going to have five sections. Correct. So, okay. Right. Okay. The three sections was is a nightmare. I know. It's too big. It is too big. I like to show you the How do you separate, separate then once a week in each section with trash and recycling? Well, the, the beauty about this particular proposal with West West Republic being here five days a week, the transitions will be a lot easier. Like if something happens initially. It's not like, oh, you have to wait for a week. They'll be around and be able to address um, concerns as we educate the, um, 
to the residents. But we'll put trash and recycling out the same time. Yes, product. correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there'll be two separate, maybe two separate containers. Two separate containers. Plus the, the can will be color coded, which only yeah. can so long you do have some of the problems through this thing yeah. and they don't have that. Yeah, I have questions on that. I'll let you ask when we're done. Mm -hmm. Okay. So based so based on the, the, the based on the score, then we recommend that the award go to public service, and that's you know for you know for a five year contract. It's a five year contract plus five one year options after that everything works accordingly. And overall, if you look at the overall uh, value which the public gives, they actually we are at five part of the value. So now, Dan, is it my understanding correctly that all the trash haulers that bid on this project? Mm -hmm. All, all waste has to be in containers. Yeah. That's correct. So if a customer <laughs> needed two containers, mm -hmm. you showed me that they could purchase a second container themselves or the pricing was really inexpensive for yes, the exactly. second. So what was that number? If, if you, Charlie needed two containers. For, for, for a unit cost for additional container for year one under a public service, it's going to be $14.25. For what size? 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 96, right. You number 96, right. 14 dollars Yeah. Just one time. Well, if you need a third one, it'd be the same thing. Also, it'd be 14 dollars Just one time, or is it per month? Or? No, no. One time. Yeah. One time. Yeah. One time yeah. charge. Right. One time charge, and you'll own. So if you want four containers, right. you're paying for four units and it's a one-time shot but all your trash has to be in those yes, units that is correct. now what about bulk the bulk the bulk what you're doing they're proposing right now bulk up, up to like four days a week to pick up they would be every week you know so they still have to schedule it to our office but they're they're going to do bulk like basically every at least one day they can do it every day i mean four days a week what, what will people be considered? What's considered bulk on the asset? Exactly. Anything, anything big. You know, mattresses, for some reason, you love mattresses. Well, yeah, I, I understand that. Yes. Couches, couches, chairs. There. There's like a something a little size difference. Anything. Yeah. 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 Just, just, you just have to know. And what you're trying to do is, by identifying it, you're trying to, you know, basically, it's, the um, resident has to say, hey, you know, we, we want to get rid of it. We're aware of it. It's not just a wild rep where we actually pick things up. And, if and everybody on the street, one street, mm -hmm. has a child's toy mm -hmm. um, for suitcases, um, mm -hmm. a couch, whatever, yeah. he's going to get 10 phone calls mm -hmm. for bulk pickup. We'll I, I don't care about the bulk pickup because whoever handles it, they're handling the skips right. and the misses and the nightmares. Right. But they just won't come out and do a bulk pickup. No, we were going to schedule it. And the main thing is we're scheduled, then you have one particular truck will go to one particular address. So that's what you're trying to identify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, they, okay, say so they only get five calls. No, they they, 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 they won't drive around town. Okay. No, no, no. 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 So I, I don't want PPW to be PWP involved. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's our goal. Yeah. I'm just saying. As far as they used to have to call face and say, hey, I got a touch. And you know, if we're paying them to pick up the ball, you know, they should be coming out and pick it up. Shouldn't have to get a phone call. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, well, that's because we would have some residents would put out the couch, the love seat, the chair, the bureau. Um, it's a move out. Yeah. Or yeah. it's they free done on the front. The bulk items are not as many as you would think. Doing it. Once a month right now is killer because if the person gets new living room furniture, what are they getting? They're getting a couch of a love seat and a chair. 90% of the time. A sectional is a couch of a love seat and a chair. Okay. Under the current thing, the couch would go in September. The love seat would go in October. Then the buying month in November, they're going to get rid of the chair. Right. So three months to get rid of it. Uh, uh, but now they can put it out in a phone call. Now they can put it out once a week yeah. and, and not not take that one address and schedule it for the next one night or whatever they can. Mm -hmm. oh, right. Okay. Sure. And sure. all the all our metal appliances yeah. does not go. We have a private guy who will come right to your house, pick it up, and he's going with it. Is that what it's going? Disappeared. Like, <laughs> is this some pretty mean a private guy? Yeah, he's a Dan who is. 
that's it's just it's just that that over it's, it's a matter yeah, of taking that yeah that's what he's saying 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 he's Yes, if you don't mind, thank you. Yeah. Am I correct that Republic is going to have a, a customer service program that is directly between the customers and Republic? Yes. So uh -huh. if I have bulk pickup, would I be the person to contact um, uh, Republic or would I contact Tracy and then you contact Republic? I will send a list off. Okay. Every Friday to Republic. Okay. And that's specifically. So they will call. know what's for the next week. Yes. Oh, but yeah. if I'm a customer and I've been missed or there's some issue, they will I talk with Republic directly yeah, and sure. I cut BPW out of the door. Sure. And is that only with Republic? Yes. Thank you. Yes. That, that, that's going to, or, you know, I, I, I wanted to mention about bulk again. These are all new containers. Mm -hmm. That every rest is going to get, and and I don't know if they've been ordered yet or not ordered. This is why I need you because you should get the go ahead. They'll still order it. You know, I know they're hot stamped, and I don't know are they having our logo on them or no logo or just uh, Republic? Oh. It's Republic. I I would highly recommend that there's some type of label placed on those that talks about all. Mm -hmm. You know. It makes it easy for the resident to see a phone number for bulk pickup and call this number, and it and it takes it out of our hands. And and you know, as crazy as it sounds, I I get calls. I, I got calls this week. Mayor, is a trash being picked up on the regular day because of Labor Day? And I'm like, well, I don't know neither, right? No, well, I don't know. No. I guess I know everything, but I don't know whether it is. As part of the contract. But yeah. if there was a what I'm getting at, if there's a calendar yeah. even stuck onto the inside of the lid for the resident to open up the lid and see, mm -hmm. okay, it's September. Okay, my day is moved. Just marketing things that maybe some of these folks can use. That's part of the contract. As part of the contract ERP, they have to actually like give out um, literature to the residents at minimum one time a year, but probably more often, especially in the beginning. So what are we doing on Main Street? What are we doing on Main Street? Main Street right now, um, the way it was going to start the project out is everybody who has an apartment will get a can at least to start out, you know, to start out that way. We've also got for contract, we have 16 dumpsters, which is part of the um, um, part of the work from the Republic, which we approved. And there is one dumpster we can put somewhere downtown. So we're trying to work on that itself. Does it make sense to put on North Street? Does it make sense to put on Howard Street? Let's try to work for But I think our initial thing is give everybody at least a, a can. They can move the cans out behind the, um, the where they live, like in the in this lot, get going that way. And again, this can be we can develop as we go along. Well, I, I guess what I want to say is I absolutely know it's going to fail mm -hmm. if you're asking someone that lives in the apartment mm -hmm. uh, on Main Street to have a 96 gallon container. Mm -hmm. They're going to put their trash like they do they're doing right now mm -hmm. on the street. They don't use containers. Only one that does is over by uh, East Main Coffee Shop mm -hmm. Cafe. I would recommend, once again, I'm going to say this, there should be no trash on Main Street. The resident needs to walk that trash to the municipal parking lot, whether it's in the back or if it's uh, over in the uh, parking lot next to Minnie Haynes or across toward the courthouse. I think we can do some type of co-op. But I think if we're going to do this, let's have that part of the plan. I'm happy that I'll be the one to go tell every owner, tell your, tell your residents that they're going to walk their trash to the, to the dumpster, there's nothing wrong with that. And I feel the same way with Turnquist. I feel the same with uh, the Lancy Village. Those folks can't, if it's yeah. raining and they got those new dumpsters, mm -hmm. they're not gonna run them through their house. And that's what we're expecting them to do. It's gonna fail. They're gonna be out in the street. They're gonna be in the parking lots. They're gonna be- But they're in cans right now. Right now, people have the cans and tools out there out front. And, and and if we wanted to enforce the beautification, we probably should. They shouldn't be in the front, mm -hmm. right? And, but they leave them in the front all week. Mm -hmm. And and I don't think that's the right play. I think if we're, I, I don't know if we have to work on this today, but I long think, term that the goal will work long term. But so listen, we got. To work. I I think we should knock out Main Street on this first day. I think we're making a huge mistake. If we don't attack 
these little because they're going to put out the trash. And, and listen, if they put out the uh, the bags, waste management or waste management, Republic's not going to pick it up. What are they going to do? Then your guys are going to come behind. I'm going to say, Dan, this is unacceptable. And if I see that young man over there following that Republic truck, there's going to, I'm, I'm going to just make it very clear. There'll be someone else in charge of figuring this out because it has to happen. We got to figure it out. What is if, if, if the capital wants us to get three dumpsters and no trash goes on Main Street, we'll make it happen. You're going to have to put three dumpsters. But then, yeah, the trouble, the trouble is, is number one, where do you put that? That's the only place in spot. I, I, well, listen, I, I don't know how many times I've said it, mm -hmm. but we can put one in the Mini Haynes parking lot, which is the town municipal. Right. Between the Hammond property and Mike Brown's, he's offered to give us a location mm -hmm. for number two. And, and, I, and I know that um, uh, we should be able to find maybe a location in the rear of the property. And, and listen, it's only a handful of bags. Once again, I have to say, go on, I'll go around and knock on their doors and I'm going to say, you've got to carry your trash bag. And they're going to be happy to do it because now they don't have seven in that little apartment every day. Okay. Can we work at it? I'll be happy to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. Not yep. just putting them out on the night before trash. Yeah. I don't think that would be feasible to do that that way, or could it? Right. No, no. That would be that would be tough. I I see what you're saying. The night before trash, you yeah. you you put a dumpster out there and have them dump it yeah. into it. Yeah. yeah, we can talk about that. I don't no. think that. That would be tough. Yeah. Okay. For a number of reasons, that'd be tough. Yeah, but that's feasible. The board wants that. Again, do you have a dumpster? So how on Main Street? What do you do with your trash? We have uh, large cans out back, and I change them to a telephone pole so they don't go away with the flood. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a you know. the dumpster back there. We're going to get trash from yeah, that's over. And if they make it, if they make it in the dumpster, that's, I, that's the catch point. Too. And listen, I agree 100%. There's going to be, but my point is, if it's in a bag, Republic's not going to pick it up. Why don't we just do Main Street? Paying a lot of money for the trash, but you're only talking a short distance, right? Once, in, once a week. But Snow Rock has a that's point. You got to lose trash people coming in. You all talk about education. Sometimes you cannot. Continue to allow the people on Main Street to become creatures of habit. They have to change too. And it makes sense. You got trash and walk around and dump it. They may not do it, but at least it's an effort you manage. That's fine. You can set it up that way. Yeah. Yes. What are you going to do with the businesses, the attorney's offices, and the across from what I call the new courthouse, from the old courthouse down to the South Street? I went through there on Tuesday and I was shocked on how many people did have totals out there. They were full and overflowing, but they were out there. I would say anywhere that has totals and can put them out, I'm good with that. But I think the part of Main Street, I, I, it's, it's a section probably from Sonny's to the courthouse. Sonny's to the courthouse. Here you do that. And they can walk. I I I don't well, think it's a big deal. I, I know every uh, property owner. I'm going to tell them that okay. your your tenant's going to have to take their trash and take it from point A to point B. That, and that's that's an easy contract modification. That's not a problem. Hmm? And make might cut our price back. You don't want to do sure, that's all I'm saying. How far do you want to go? Well, I think it. I don't know how much that would modify, but I think then we're, we're our town guys are throwing the trash in the back of the pickup truck. And yeah, now you're, you're talking. I, 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 I don't. Let's see. Yeah, it's, it's worth uh, either way. It's, it's just changing the name of the town through it. I mean, okay. if we add dumpsters, you know, the only way is, you know. Let's try the dumpsters. It, right. We'll put it in place. And, the only thing with dumpsters is you now have to, you have to see a, 
Joe, who's on the way back from Chester City, yep. uh, he's had it, been out on his boat for a week. And he's got four bags of trash. And he's gonna, uh, there's a dumpster, and he's gonna fall in. So you're gonna have a problem with outsiders realizing the town of Elkton has dumpsters that's using. It, it will be a problem, but you know, we got 80 Street is pretty well, tons of cameras. And uh, if we catch someone, I mean, that's language we'll have to work on what the fine will be. And then I, I, I don't know why I've seen dumpsters with combination locks or push button locks and maybe it can be given to the code of the, the folks upstairs. I, I think, I think it's a lot easier than we think it is. Okay. Do that? Right. I, I just don't want the track <laughs> backs on Main Street. Okay. What happens to the current waste management that are out there? You have I, I know you had a question earlier. I have a couple questions. Uh, on Main Street, what day do they pick up trash on Main Street? Why don't you do it on Monday and stuff like the BS perhaps that of help perhaps either way you go. And and it may it may go that way with right. this new route with yeah. five zones. Yeah. But but Main Street's horrible. And I think everybody drives down to it's just plain horrible on trash day. And uh it's terrible. People just throw crap out and that word. Uh it's gondolas, trash cans, you put them in a park lot next to his business, the lady across the street's gonna complain of the smell. <laughs> All the rats, mice, what if you got to think about that a little bit too? They have to be emptied on a timely basis, which you probably got worked out. Right. But anybody's had gondolas and I've had them, they're no better pain in the butt. Rats, they stink. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. But maybe you can work it out. Maybe do a little landscape work around it too. They're horrible. Drive down through Elk, you're supposed to look nice. It don't look nice. It really does with trash, 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 trash. Trash, trash, trash. trash tastes terrible. terrible. And the other thing one more bug me to death is refrigerators, couches, chairs, the lady talked about. I've even called before and had stuff picked up. Mattresses. If you're going to give a guy one can, you're going to stuff a mattress down in. I'm just saying, but let me finish. There's, there needs to be, if I'm going to clean my garage out tomorrow, I could probably fill that trash truck. So what's going to happen to me? i got to Put all my crap in my driveway until the trash day comes, until I get rid of it six, ten years down the road. <laughs> Seriously, think about it. Or clean your basement out. Mm -hmm. I got two or three freezers I want to put out in the trash. Do I call him, her? How does it get resolved? I would do mine. I would get my place cleaned up today. I don't want to wait till next week for you to come get your trash. But if you multiply that, say you multiply that by say like three houses, yeah, you just fill up trash. And that's right. why that's the difference. That's why if you exactly. schedule it, you know what's out there. You know how to handle it for you. That's what I thought we were asking. Yeah, but I don't know I'm going to clean it out today. That's that's why they need to work. You, know, you, know, you had a comment. Yeah. And, and just two very quickly, one of the things to consider if there are dumpsters behind in the municipal parking lot. Are they able to respond when we anticipate a flood? And can they get those dumpsters out of there if there's the potential of a flood coming through? So that's that's a reality. Yeah. But the other piece of it is, and as we talked about this originally, we all got involved in the minutia of the pick up here, pick up there, and so forth. And what I consistently say, no matter who you choose, it's their business. Yes. They do this for a living. Yes. So we present them with the scenarios, and they're the ones that can give. I think we can use, they, they could come up with a solution. Right. You had a question back here. Yeah, my question is with the new trash company. You're talking about new 96 gallon bins. Yeah. I was forced to go out and buy two nice bins that are mm -hmm. huge. Well, mm -hmm. I can still use those, so I'm not lugging these great big bins on the down my driveway. Uh, um, you know, the bin has to be the default. Yeah, I have a follow-up question. I have a very elderly neighbor who's not able to handle the weight of this. Yeah. Now, now it's one of those small ones. Yeah. Yeah. They have one that still has to come from right. the Right, right. And, yeah. and, and they are offering smaller yes. bins yes. Yes. for you. Yes. Okay, let's let's get. Is there any uh, other comments or questions you need from us? 
I've got one other question. So an area that is completely rental, mm -hmm. in your initiation of the Canaan or whatever education you're going to provide, mm -hmm. do you talk to the owner or do you talk to the people living in the house? Not the owner. The people who are living on the owners of the building. Because mm -hmm. somewhere you've got to prize them on what's happening at his place. Sure. Sometimes you prize them, they don't give a hoot. They just live in there, they just go to track that. When the cancer is signed, though, you know, if they get approved, they can't go out, the cancer is signed to an address. And that's, you know, that's what the company does. You know, that's what the public will do. They got companies that do this for a living. So they sign to an address, and that's, you know, so if it happens to the can, if it needs to be replaced, Go back to the landlord, but it's also part of what we do is for the education. We put stuff out there. We tell you know the renters like this. Is what we pick up here's what we have, and we just try to educate them that way. Now, when we started the whole you know change back in November, it, it took a while, but a lot of people kind of adapt to a point. We still we still expect hardships down the road, but the main thing is with Republic, they do this for a living. That's why at least that's why being five days a week, they kind of know backwards and forwards. They have um. Uh, let me see. They, they do as areas. Let me see. They, they get from 590 units to over 7,900 units. So they, they know, you know, they, they've done this, you know, they've got a lot of branches. They do this for a living. A lot of times we're getting deferred to them when we're educating the gathering. That's the most important thing. So the workers know what they're doing. Yeah. Where are our citizens? How are we going to know what they're doing? Just that's, just that's, that's, that's the question. Mm -hmm. We got to make sure it's clear yeah. because we put hangers up the last time mm -hmm. telling people. What we're going to do with guess where I found my hand okay. behind my front bush after the whole process was started. We've got, we've got, yeah, you know, what we have with, um, we have a, if everything goes well, you know, we'll get a transition team started out. And I'd be glad to bring them up to an October workshop and we'll show you exactly what's going out there. Because again, this is what they do for a living. You know, not answer my question. How are the citizens going to understand what we're doing through the town? And Republican, they know the job. But yet, when you start this process, mm -hmm. I guarantee you, 50% of the people are going to stop and not say what, what's going on. Yeah, yeah. That, that's why, we're, we, again, we'll put the hangers out, we're educating people, but, but the thing is, Commissioner, is since there are five days a week, we can at least kind of adjust to that they go, at least initially. We're ready, we're ready for the transition. This particular fact, uh, an example is Rising Sun. They just switched from um, police management to um, the public, and they did the same thing. First couple weeks were pick up, and then people got used to it, and it worked well then. So that you each other in the building. One more question. So I have two actually. Mm -hmm. um, I never did get notified. My trash from the block stayed out there for days until I called Tracy. And she said, We got notified. I said, No, 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 no we didn't. Okay. Um, the other question is I don't know if I missed, yeah. but do we know what it's going to cost the residents for this new um, trash service? We do. Yes. Dan, go ahead and tell us what the price is. It's about three times more. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was afraid of it. Yeah, you yeah. know. Well, the average, the average cost for a monthly basis, monthly basis, it'll be like thirty-one fifty. The mm -hmm. average monthly cost to me is one to five, so that's the total one. So. What's the so amount? What the price? That's what they said. Uh, forty-one fifty. I already gave the board the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Looked at the number. So thirty-one fifty a month for trash pickup. Right. Yeah, per unit. Yeah. Twenty. Yeah. Twenty-eight fifty. Dollars. I don't know. I will say that's much, and I think you shall carry what way, but I don't live in a development that's got, you know, trash service and all that. Um, we pay for it privately, and um, the trash providers in our area are $150 a quarter. Or you take it to the landfill for $7. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, so and I have no vote. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I recognize that. I, I absolutely recognize that. So, Dan, what do you need from us tonight? It's a recommended for recommendation for us from public services to take the trash contract. Um, for the for the for the organization there, we'll start the meeting. We'll start the ball rolling. All right. Do we have a motion to approve Republic as our new trash hauler with the uh, based upon the. Uh, oh. The, the the bids and the RS, R, RFP. So okay. we have a motion. Any Second. seconds? Okay. And we got a second. Any more discussion? Yeah, the only other discussion. I know this merge between the new and the, and the residents here, but <clears throat> how much time are you going to give for this to have straightened itself out for the most part? 
then well, the new contract, the new contract has to start November 1st. I understand. And the public should have this down, and yeah. the public should have it down that uh, this marriage is going to get better in how much time? About three months? Or are you going to, or when are you going to come back and review what you're doing? Think it that it, well, when the contract starts, you know, we're, we're going to work with them. That, you know, that's everything. I understand. Well, 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 management is going to come in and they're taking all their trash. Anything that says waste management, Upper Chesapeake, any company, they're going to be gone. Then prior to them taking that, Republic will come in and drop their coders off to each resident. Mm -hmm. So the residents will know what Rising Sun did say was if they started, and I would recommend it to finance, um, they put it on the water bills as soon as they found out. Mm -hmm. Hey, keep an eye out. Trash service is changing. Um, mailings won't be sent out. Just a little note on that water and sewer bill that they had. Mm -hmm. Um, then she said they followed it up. The town did a mass mailing. They did a, They handed it out themselves to each resident. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that that's the main thing. We got to let the residents know that November one, you got a new service in town. They're going to swap out your waste management containers, and I think those are should be the only ones we should pull with. If someone bought their own container they own their container we shouldn't pick that up no we're not but they can't use them so carol can't use them but i've told a couple residents who have kind of asked me about it yes well, like, we need to put price. that we need to get that message out let's do a tv commercial let's do some radio ads let's get it going we got to do it I know. we have an opportunity to fix this ongoing disaster that we've had for the last year and we got to do it right we only got one chance here. I will not buy Tylenol after November 1st. I won't have to. Yeah, especially going to the <laughs> it's, a year. it's a nightmare. We're it's a, make sure it's a nightmare. Uh, I would say that uh, we're in, I would say to you, Dan, that uh, uh, I would say sometime in the next two weeks, when we get Republic in here, and I, yes. let's get Republic in here and let's tell them There's no, what our issue with that. We're ready. All right, let's get, go. let's get Republic in here as soon as we can so we can tell them what we want to say. Not a problem. All right. So, just approval. That's so all. we had a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, residents, for the increase. Quick question, because things are going too fast for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it's, what was it, Dan? $31 a month for rent. Yes. Where do you get the 3150 from? It's 2850. No, 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 it's five, it's the five year average. Five year. Oh, you but, but the first year will be 2850 yeah, a month. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, which is 8550, which is 8550 yeah. 85, 50, 85, 50 a quarter. Right. 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 It's the five year average. But that's the market. Nice. So my question is, like right now we get our water and sewer. Wait, we get if you get, okay. if you get a water it's part of the water and um sewer bill itself, that's take a part of it. So yeah. All right, your question again. So we get the water and sewer bill together yes. with and the trash is included in that. Yes. So right. what yeah. you're saying now is when we get that water and sewer bill now. Let's say thirty dollars a month, so that's ninety dollars because you get it every three months. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that bill is going to go up ninety dollars. Yeah. It's going to go up fifty. It will go up to eighty-five fifty, right. not going up ninety dollars over current thirty-six. Right. If thirty-six will be eighty-five fifty. Yeah, it's going to go up to and, and I can tell you, my hope is that we could eventually do monthly billing. That was going to be my next question. Could you break it down? Right. Well, well, I, I know there's I know there's a lot of uh, challenges there, but even for the, the 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 landlords that have rental properties, they'd like to see it monthly also. But I know it's a challenge. Or separate. I'm to handle that. And you want it separate? No, I just think it's too much at one time. It's going to be all right. You, you can actually yeah, come in and pay monthly. You don't have to wait. Yeah, you don't have to wait for a bill. We'll take money in. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we'll make sure people are aware they can pay monthly. <laughs> Was there anything else on the trash? 
Thank you. Day. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We're, 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 All right. And, and I think I have a young man in the back that had a. You wanted? Did you want to come up and talk about the yes. meadow or the, the the ball fields? Yes. Yeah. Come on down. It's your turn. Find the mic or where you want? Yeah, yeah. we want you in front of the mic. Yeah, sure. Now next week, uh, yeah. Yeah. Is that what's one? I don't think it is. Yeah. I think we're going to say meeting adjourned. Yeah, we will. We I, I saw you back here before. Don't want to state your name and your address. And, uh, uh, yes, my name's Brian Stoche. I live at uh, 73 Stanfield Drive. I spoke to uh, Brian uh, uh, over the weekend at the uh, Singer Lee Fire Company uh, flea market, and uh, one of the big concerns he has a couple of small children. Uh, uh, the, the kids play at uh, uh, at the Elton Little League fields, and uh, uh, I guess you're you're how many years have you been at the facility? Not, not as long compared to most people. This is our third year. Third year. And what, what they're seeing, it's been progressively worse with the uh, homelessness, the needles, yes. uh, a lot of challenges that we have down at the ballpark. And um, so uh, my, my discussion was that, you know, one, one when the, we were down at the Little Lake Field, we had probably 1,500 kids. There was activities every night going on, uh, a lot of action, and it's really shrunk down into really nothing. And it's uh, what we find is that when you have not a lot of activity, a lot of dark activity happens. And it makes it very, very difficult to kind of manage that. Eater Park is a uh, private property. Uh, it's owned by the Eater Park Association. And uh, we rely on if there's any problems down there, they would contact our police department or call 911 with any uh, issues. Uh, so Chief Rogers is over to the far right, Hi. Carolyn. And uh, uh, our, our biggest challenge is, is that we just need to be aware for a phone call, and I think that we would respond. But I think the challenge is, is during the evening hours when there's no one there, they're in there camping out, and they're uh, doing their, we're assuming there's a lot of drugs happening because there's a lot of needle slingers. That shows that it shows, yeah, yeah. shows that it is. So did I say everything or is there more? No, no you did. And I will say that um, I, I'm speaking it for myself. I'm not representing the little league um, as a parent, but I, I do have friends who are involved. And they said in the past couple of weeks that they've noticed a big difference with the police down there. Good. Really as soon as uh, we were made aware of this, through an email, and I believe it came through. I think through it was in the wait for it to email. Okay. Yeah, it might have been passed along. It, 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 get, it okay. got passed along to me, and we did reach out to Mr. Eller and ask for a schedule of the game so we would know. Yep. Um, so whenever we can, we are trying to make an effort and, and be down there and be visible. Well, one, of the, one of the questions that I had that I didn't ask you on Saturday, uh, Mr. Mayor, was we were talking about some of these organizations that are providing needles uh, for these things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then I was—I got wondering, like, you know, is—is is there any incentives for the city? Is there any kind of, you know, financial incentives to have these organizations operate in the city, or are they really just here to help those who need help? I—I I will actually be happy to say that anytime there's a nonprofit, they don't pay real estate taxes. Um, they may get assistance from the federal government and the state government to be in those facilities. But there is zero incentive to the town of Elton uh, government for us to have any nonprofit or any organization. Uh, it's space that could be leased out. Okay. So to answer your question, there's no value. Oh, I, that's wrong. Probably the wrong word to use. There's no. Um, uh, there's no monetary value to the town of Elton, and 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 you know you you hope that. that if you, when you listen to organizations, when they come in, they speak about uh, helping people that are down and out. It's, it is a challenge. You know, you, we all have hearts, you know, and we all feel for uh, our fellow neighbor. And, uh, but the challenge that we have, we had 
I guess it's probably been about seven or eight years ago when we tried to clean up some of the homeless camps, was that we found that there's like six or seven organizations right here in our own community. And then if you took what their budgets are and how much money they raise, and then you multiply that by the six, and then you have about, I think at the time we had about, by the, the count and time, the study and count and time uh, uh, that they did, I think we had 18 homeless people in the town of Elton at that time, where you could have put them up in the Hampton Inn uh, for 365 days a, a week and, and give them $100 to have food and drink on each and every day. So sometimes I don't believe the system works. That's what I was getting at. I, I, has there ever been any discussion um, with these these programs to say, hey, look, keep doing the good stuff, but maybe maybe we stop doing this deal exchange mm -hmm. because if they're ending up on the streets, that's not good for anybody. It's not good, you know. It's not good, and they definitely have no. Obviously, we spoke. It's got it's really got no place anywhere. But the little league park, that's specifically for children and families. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I know those guys down there, I know that they work out, you know, effortlessly trying to clean well, it up. It's, it's, uh, um, and I can tell you about 10 years ago, I was still down there until probably 11 o'clock about every night. Yeah, I know. And I know. And like I said, I'm, there's, I, my volunteer, the amount that I volunteer isn't anything compared to most of the folks down here. But, you know, this is our third year. My wife and I will do coach for mm -hmm. clean up days and, you know, we'll help get fields ready. Uh, but it would just it, it would be lovely if, if there's a way to talk to these organizations and say, hey, no, no more of this, if that's even an option. So I know of two that do it in town locally, and that's Voices of Hope and the Sioux County Health Department. I can tell you that Voices of Hope, we've had these very exact conversations, and they actually will come out and pick up any needles that you find anywhere. They're really good about doing that. They'll do it anywhere. They'll do it um, right away that same day. They come right out and we'll clean up. They also, they, and it's actually not a needle exchange program. Like nobody has to give you dirty needles to get new needles. So it's just a needle program, really. But what they say is that um, consistently, they actually do collect probably 110, 120% more than what they actually give out because they track it. Because, well, they have to because there are a lot of them are grant funded too. They get grants and stuff. So they're doing a lot on the data collection. Um, so I don't know if that means that the health department's giving out a lot more and we're just not seeing them, but um, but I honestly don't think that you're going to get them to not do that anymore. And the reason I say that is because um, in my conversations with them, they know it's very controversial, but they feel like it is at least a first contact with that person that added and um and they're just planting seeds until they can get them into recovery. I wonder how long that probationary time, you know, lasts for though. I, I understand maybe first no, contact, I, I, but I mean. I hear what you're saying. I say first contact. I mean, they're they're going out constantly and trying to con uh, connect with the people, the, the addicts that are out here. Um, they're going out, they do cleanup days, long 40, they do them in hunger manner. I mean, I've seen them out in different places. Um, maybe that is someplace if we're having a, a real issue there, maybe I can reach out to them um, and ask them to maybe even have a presence down there. Could, could we ask them maybe to uh, go daily? I'm saying they, they they would probably go down there and clean up, but they would also probably, if that's where they're having, if that's where a lot of the addicts are hanging out, they may even go down there and try and just connect with them. Mm -hmm. We've offered their services. Get them to go down there and clean that up or walk through there. Are they not walking up the hill? I don't think they want to lock them up anymore. I, I do believe they do lock them up. Do they? Yes. I don't think there's a fence around the entire complex. Right? The That's to my knowledge. The dugouts do get locked. And I, I've heard guys say that they, they climb over the fence. To get in, there. in the dugouts? In the dugouts, yeah. So, you know, I I will say that, like I said, I, I'm, I feel like they have done their part. They're trying down there. Um, it just seems like, and, and I know Voices of Hope, they they have come down. Like, uh, I know, like, in the spring cleanup, they'll come, they've come down. But, you know, it's, I think what I'm talking about is, you know, half hour before the game, you know, when you get down there after work and you're getting the field ready, you look in the dugout, you know, really, you don't have time to, to contact Voices of Hope. I mean, unless they're, like, very deep, mm -hmm. which would be hard to believe. So yeah, that doesn't happen. Usually they do it within yeah. a couple hours. Or I, know that they have, I know that they have come out before, just based okay. on what I, I've been told. Okay. Um, you know, but I don't know. To me, it just seems like a 
mean, if they're doing a well enough job, know that they're, you know, collecting 25% more of the needles they distribute, then there should be some good data on who they're giving these needles to and how many times they're getting needles. Because to me, it shouldn't happen often. I feel like, you know, a couple times and we, you, we were at a house that. and we recovered over 5,000 needles in one residence. Uh, and we absolutely reached out and said, what the heck are you guys doing? I mean, we've had these sort of same conversations. Um, and then that's how I know this information, because we've actually addressed this in other areas, and, um, not at the Little League. And also, um, I was able to talk with them, and I got a contact uh, number for the person who coordinates the cleanups. And I gave it to Mr. Ella. Mm -hmm. And also, if one of those things maybe um, you could the Little League could contact Voices of Hope, the phone number I gave Mr. Ella. And then if a game or whichever is starting at 5 p.m., then they can request them to come in at 4 p.m. Yeah. Right? And, and one of the things that, you know, like my wife was talking about, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't really know what they're injecting. You know, is it fentanyl? Does it have fentanyl in it? You know, Almost 99% of the time. You're talking, talking, yeah, so you're talking about right? these needles are in these dugouts. So you're talking about trace amounts that can really you know, kill you. And you're talking, we're talking about children who are spitting seeds, eating gum, they drop something on the ground, they pick it up, they put it in their mouth. Mm. It happens every game, especially with the younger kids. I mean, you're talking kids as little as, you know, three years old down there when they start playing. So I don't, you know, I, to me, it's, I'm with you. I find them that will stare well next to my shop. It's not unusual for me to find them. I'm not surprised when I do. Of course, I've got shark containers in my business, so I get rid of them. Mm -hmm. um, but one day, out by the creek, I found a whole bag of them. I called EPD and they sent somebody out. But yeah, needles are a big problem. Needle sticks, whatever's left in that vial, it's a big problem. Yeah, yeah it's not illegal. It used to be illegal. Nobody, We didn't deal with people with needles before because it was illegal unless you had a prescription and you were diabetic. And now it's not. So. It's all of those changes that actually yeah, change like the It starts maybe try to work on something that would stop the distribution of them. I don't, I mean, I don't know if that's possible, but it continues doing the other work that they're doing, but I feel like it's it's not possible from this board to to uh, ask them to stop. I mean, it's, okay. a, it, it's, it's uh, above our level. And that level would be, I think you'd have to go right to the state yeah. legislators. Okay. Yeah, especially when the program's within the health department, so. Yeah, you got the yeah. Cecil County Health Department, which is a state organization, right? Yep. Yeah. It's all state. Yeah, you know, at, at this level, we can't, I mean, you're saying you can't even arrest someone with a needle today. No. Not unless it's, I mean, so the state's not going to do it. So unless it's used in a homicide or something, the state's not going to do any kind of testing on it to see that the substance is still legal, but they're not going to do any kind of testing so on it. If you see someone dropping a needle, can they be uh, arrested for endangering the public? Something? I mean, probably a litter. Probably a littering is what yeah, you're going to get. That's probably what you're going to get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what we could do is uh, let's try to work with Voices of Hope, see if they'll come down here prior to the games. Maybe we can get it on the schedule with Tim and get them down there. And, to... and like I said, I'm not speaking for, he may have already done that. So yeah. maybe, but yeah, maybe reach out to him. But I, I was just coming here tonight because I hear, I hear stuff on the street. I hear things from, you know, hearsay through the league. So I just thought maybe tonight would be a good opportunity to come down. And well, I appreciate you coming down, though. I yeah. really do. Thank well, you. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else have anything to say for the good of the town? This Pat? kind of goes along with what he was talking about. Um, sometimes on the weekends, my husband and I will go down and sit behind Elk River. You'd be surprised the amount of cars that drive the space between the snack shop and whatever that I guess senior field. It's a wide space. You'd be surprised how many cars are driving back there in the dark. No games are going on or anything. They're up to no good back there. And well, it's private property. Someone has to call or report it to us. Well, I was gonna ask maybe could the little they when all their games are done have a chain and put it across there. So cars can drive back there. Uh, that's something that we could ask the Little League, but that's their decision. Yeah. Yes, I mean, yeah, ask the Little League because 
there's a lot of cars that go back. I think there. it was chained up for a while, wasn't it? And they're chained. I, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I, I thought there was a chain there. Yeah, I thought there was a chain also. There was at one point. Okay, anyone else have anything to say for the good of the town? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank whoever gave the approval to the fence up behind the community center, uh, along the back of North Street, right behind my property, because it seems to have probably stopped or at least drastically cut foot traffic. We were getting through private property from that side. That's great. So, that great news. Great. Thank you. It was a Appreciate whole team that. decision, a whole team. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a Miss Lori Heath. Is it Rinko? Yeah. Online. I'm not sure if she's wanting to talk for the town. I'd ask her to unmute. And I would say. Just listening. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, meeting adjourned. <laughs>